See, oh, people already liking this? There can't be 19 people. No, nobody's viewing it. <laughs> oh, edit this guy. And we're going to set it for, it is now six. So I don't end up talking all night. Save. Okay, that should work. Phone's on quiet. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, this is Lisa here. And as I said, hi, Roxy. Uh, you're watch this. If you, oh, you, you said this. You said you're asked your friend to watch this. That must be a comment from before. Um, before I get started, I thought I would wait just a little bit to see uh, if anybody actually shows up. Oh, okay, my mouse is, <laughs> it, it looked like I disconnected for a bit, but I think I'm still live. Um, looks like we have a few people watching. It'd be nice if you commented so I could verify that my sound is working okay and you can see me. Uh, today's live is going to be on using in Brilliance Essentials. And one of the features that I thought I'd cover, because we have so much, you can do so much in Essentials, um, is the ability to uh, copy and paste and put multiples in a hoop so that you can um, create more of them. Oh, hi, Barbara. Oh, thank you. Thank you for letting me know I'm not all by myself here. <laughs> so uh, I know a lot of the times we want to do, if you have a larger hoop especially, and um, okay, everyone's checking in. Jan, you're from, oh, from your Kansas City class. Wow, what a great class that was. You guys got, got kind of got pro, uh, private lessons going on in Kansas City. We did that last year. Uh, and the sound is working. Thank you, Monica. Hi, Sandy. And, um just everyone's checking in. I think that's pretty awesome. Uh, when you have a, a five by seven or larger hoop, a lot of times you want to put multiples in the hoop. And it's very easy to do using Brilliance Essentials. Uh, enthusiast, if you have that, I'll show you a trip, trick at the end, how to do it real quick. But it's simple, easy peasy to do in, in Brilliance Essentials and doing your color sorting. So I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes. We've only been going for two minutes now. I thought I would, here's my, oh, Norma, hey, how you doing again? <laughs> and Bonnie's checking in from Nebraska. Excellent. I guess Norma's from, from Mississippi, and she was in, um, I guess, I think you were in one of my classes. I'm trying to remember which, was it Gulfport, possibly? Nashville? I don't know. You know, it's everyone kind of, names look familiar, people look familiar, I've, you know. I'm getting old. I don't remember everybody. <laughs> Hi, Susan. Thanks for checking in. Um, we are from, where am I from? <laughs> I'm in Colorado. We had our snow blizzard this week. It didn't really turn out to be a blizzard, but uh, it was flipping cold today. If you saw my live uh, Facebook this morning on the Brilliance uh, YouTube, uh, not YouTube channel, and Brilliance Facebook page, I talked about the everything embroidery market. And just in case you were wondering, it's still naked. I still have my naked hat. Have not. That's next week's project. And my my office is still a disaster area. But oh well, it happens. Hey Yvonne and Jean and and uh, Jane from Toronto, Canadian. See, you can watch me live. You don't have to worry about crossing the border. You can come from all over the all over the world to watch these things. Uh, so, yes, I did a live this morning because I'm going to the Everything Embroidery Market and I wanted to make sure people knew that there are still a few spots left in the classes. Although after that live this morning, I hear that they um, got kind of a rush on the website. I know I got about 14 or 15 messages asking about what the topics were in the classes. So they're going to fill up at Everything Embroidery Market. So I thought, well, since I'm already here, I got makeup on. I... I <laughs> It's like when you work from your house, the big thing is, uh, do I have clothes on, not my sweats and yoga pants, and do I have makeup on because I have to be presentable. Uh, Marcy, hi from Buffalo. Excellent. So um, this is a casual, non-rehearsed again. A um, uh, What we're going to talk about essentials. Carmen says, hey, from Texas. Oh, Eric. Oh, my partner in crime. Hopefully you're feeling better. <laughs> uh, lettering, uh, listening in while you digitize. Yes, Eric Campbell, he was at the DAC show. Uh, he was teaching the entire time in Minnesota. And I guess he got travel sickness. So and he's been uh, at home. But he'll be in, at, when I'm at the Everything Embroidery Market in 
where am I going? Kentucky. He'll be at the Dax show up in Chicago because it's going on um, close enough to the same weekend. So we're splitting, splitting the country. Yeah. So uh, Victoria from Texas. Hey, y'all. Yes, I'm excited to go to Texas for the Applique Getaway. We have our uh, seminar classes and our workshops going on. Uh, Bonnie, glad you're watching. Oh, yeah, Roxy and Bonnie. That, that was cute that you guys tagged each other so that you can uh, see this. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> oh, South Wales, Australia. Yes, hey, Barbara, glad you could join us from the other side of the dateline. Um, I guess our day is winding down and yours is already getting started full blown. Okay, so today's, today's live version is how to put multiples in a hoop. And these are little felty designs. I don't know if you can see my stitch out from here. Uh, they're from Linny Penny. And they're the, if you get one of the designs, they're just one little one. And this is my 5 by 7 hoop. So I can copy multiples in the hoop and stitch them out at one time. As you can see, I didn't quite finish the stitching before the time came up because I didn't realize how many and how many color changes. And I got too picky with my colors. So I kind of ran out of time. But I will pop it back at the machine and finish it up. And the last stage will be putting the felt on the back. So that I, and that's already cut and ready. So that the last step will secure them all in place. And then I'll trim them out and I'll have my little felties. These are a little uh, frappes, you know, frappuccino. Star, Starbucks, is if mine are Starbucks, mine are pink. Uh, they're going to be little bookmarks. You put a slip, put a paper clip, and they'll be little tiny bookmarks. So I'm going here. Okay, so I'm going to try switching the camera over. We're, gonna, we're getting better at this. Um, technology here. So let me see if I can go and get my live. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay. So here is, let me see, how can I make me smaller? We don't need me up here. Possibly. Maybe I'll just turn me off. And there was a way to do that. Ugh. See, I made, I jinxed myself by saying I was good at the technology and I'm not happy to be there. And Current application. Oh, drat. Oh, well, we'll just leave me here for now. I don't know how to get rid of it yet. Maybe like that. Oh, <laughs> deleted me. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> here's my in, in brilliant screen. And this is my one little Frappuccino uh, Frappe here. I put Lenny Penny's website because she's got some really cute designs and they stitch beautifully. When you find a digitizer that you like how they um, digitize the work, you like to keep them. So I'm just going to get, I just typed this on here using my lettering tool. I'm going to just delete it so I can get rid of it. But this is my little Frappe and I want to do multiple ones in my hoop. So the first thing I have to make sure I have selected is the correct hoop. And as you know from quick tip video number one, that you choose this from the properties, scroll down to select the hoop that you want to use. The one that I have selected is the 130 by 180 and I have it rotated on my screen. So I have, I know what I am going to stitch these in. If you don't have a hoop displayed on your screen, it's kind of hard to tell if, first of all, if you're fitting your hoop or if your designs are going to, if you're putting too many or too little or what you, your workspace is. If you happen to lose your hoop, this is also shown in quick, or talked about in quick tip video number one. The H key on your keyboard allows you to toggle your hoop on and off. So if you happen to be missing your hoop, just hit the H key on your keyboard and your hoop comes back. Now, so we have our hoop displayed. I'm showing it here on the bottom. That is our hoop size. It, next to the right of it, you see our design size. I know I can fit a lot in the hoop, but there's a few things I need to check out before I start copying and pasting. So I need to make a plan because I need to understand what it is that I'm actually doing in this project. When I Let's zoom in on this little guy so that we can actually see the design that we're looking at. Okay, so we've got him zoomed in on our screen. Color number one is our placement stitch. This does this shows you where your little piece of felt is going to go in your hoop. Okay, so we need to have that, and it needs to be its own color so that the machine will stop because it's going to stitch this, stop. We put our piece of felt on the second color stitches, and 
what this does is it holds the felt into place in the shape of what it is that we want to do. It also has to be its own separate color. Color number three, this is our cup. Four is the foam. Five is the uh, details on the foam. And if you notice that the details of the foam are light brown and the cup is light brown. But if you happen to look at this, do you see how the foam is overlapping the running stitch here? That means that this, when you do your color sort at the end, when we have our multiples and we're going to sort our colors, it is not going to combine this color with this color because the foam has to stitch first. The Embrilliance Essentials color sort is intelligent that way. It is not going to automatically combine these two because of the layering of the foam. Okay. Now, color number six here is this pink, deep rose, and it is a color background for the little shield and the straw at the same time. The next color that goes on top is this white, and the final color, which is where you slide your felt under the hoop, is the finishing stitch. Now, she has it listed in the original design. Also, it is listed as deep rose. I changed it to dark fuchsia because if you look at this, the this outline does not touch anything in this entire design. It's all by itself. So the software will want to combine this rose with this rose if it was still rose. So that's why I went and changed it to dark fuchsia so there would be no chance of color sorting and combining these together. Okay, just remember, if I'm gonna, I'm not overloading your information here. You're going to get all this. You can watch it again. <laughs> okay, so you can put me on repeat, and you'll say, "Oh, what did she say?" Make sure that you have each individual colors. So, I verify that all of my colors are unique, so that when I do my multiples, I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to select my design, and the first one, I'm going to just put it up in the upper left corner because I like to work in an orderly fashion to make sure that uh, everything it's going to fit in my hoop. So it's in the upper left corner. So while I have it up here, I'm going to, I was thinking to myself, you know, this, I have this one going this way. What if I wanted to do these as hair barrettes and I wanted to have one going left and one going right. So well, I'm going to copy this to my clipboard and I'm going to paste it, which pastes another one right on top of it, as you see, and I move it to the side. If I now want this one to be mirror imaged, I go up here to the top where the little mirror image button is, it says flip horizontally, click it one time, and now I have one left and one going right. So if I wanted to have matched pairs like this, then I would make sure that I created that ahead of time. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys because um, it's it's kind of important. You don't want to have to go through this and then do it again afterwards, okay? So I have my two. One's going left, one's going right. And I'm going to select them both. I'm going to copy both of them together. And I'm going to paste them. One right after, they get pasted right on top, and I just need to move them over to the right-hand side. Now, I'm going to paste one more on top of here so that I have a total of six. These are going to be little felty things that I have to trim. So I want to, first of all, make sure that they're equally spaced, and I also want to make sure, so equally spaced, I'm going to fill my hoops. I'm going to put one of them way over here. Okay, that's item number one. I also want the bottoms to all be at the same level. So I can actually turn my grid on and use that, but the Essentials program has this cool feature. Uh, did my mouse get stuck here? Whoops. Need to make sure I select them all. Essentials has a cool feature called Align and Distribute. When you have your multiples all on the screen, the first thing you want to do, or I want to do in this instance, is align all of the bottoms. So I'm going to, while they're all selected, I'm going to click on the align and distribute button, and the screen pops up and it says, I want to, uh, what do I want to align? I want to align the bottoms, and I'm going to click the apply. Do you see how the bottoms, they all kind of 
munched down together so that they were even. So you can only do one of these things at a time. So I line the bottoms and I clicked apply. Now I'm going to go to the distribute section. Now the distribute section, first of all, they want to know what do you want, how do you want this distributed? Now I want them evenly spaced between this guy on the right and this one on the left. And I'm going to choose the center right here. And I'm going to click apply and boom. Do you see how they all just lined up all centered? Once I have them all done like that, this one row is completely done. So I'm going to go and click uh, copy and paste. And now I'm going to paste, move this guy down all the way to the bottom here. And I'm going to paste another one and move him down all the way to the bottom here. And after doing the three in my hoop or laying it out in, on my machine here, I know I can only do three going this way. And I can, this is as many as I can get easily and spaced out. Now, that's how easy it is to fill your hoop using in Brilliance Essentials. You have to do this kind of mathematically or logically. Go step by step. First, verify that you have one and that it's clean and clear and has all the colors. I create my row by copying and pasting. I align all of the bottoms using align and distribute. And then I distribute them equally in my hoop. And then I copy and paste the three rows. Now I'm ready to do my color sort. Okay. Hopefully I'm seeing a lot of hellos. Oh, hey, Christine. I saw you uh, a couple times, but not as much fun as the mansion. But yes, yes, but we're doing this online to get this done. <laughs> okay, so I have them all copied. And if you look in the lower right-hand corner, do you see the number? There's seven colors in my design and 144 color changes. So we want to do a color sort. If you go to your utility menu and choose color sort, this brings up a dialog box. And it sorts and it has to go through each individual one and check out the layering and, and make sure that everything's going to go um, as, you're, as expected. It might take a little while. You might need a beer. Oh, I'm not on camera, so you can't even see me taking the set. Hold on, it's, it's sorting because I'm doing this also online, so it's using up some of my uh, bandwidth here. Mm. We're in, where in Mississippi? I'm not sure normal. Okay. Now the design page, it tells us if the color sort has been reduced by 119 color changes. Now the most color changes that it can be um, reduced by is the number that's uh, the number of uh, needles and colors here. What I usually tell people to do is at this point, Go to click on new view so that you can actually see what the software is doing. So what's going to happen at your machine. So at this point, I'm, I, it opens up a whole new design page in the current hoop that I had selected. And I can expand it here. And I see color number one is all the linen color. So that's all my placement. Color number two is all the pumpkin. So that's all this, the second tack down. This color is um, the light brown. That's great. Here is our beige for our, our uh, foam. Here's our, <laughs> this is what happened. You see, you made a mistake. Oh, I hate, you know, this is almost as bad as doing a hands-on class. Crazy things happen. What had happened here is I had set it so that it would keep a stop so that I could um, the machine would stop after each one, which would allow me to um, do my color changes so that all of my colors would be proper. But because all these are individuals, I don't need to have that color change. I don't need the machine to stop after each one of these color changes. So when you find something that you did was weird or that strangely happened, you didn't expect to this, because we just opened up a new view, just close it. Don't panic. Don't save it. Just close it. Whoops. We're going to go back to our original, and this was so easy the first time, I'm just going to select it all, and I'm just going to do it all over again, because it went so quickly. So you can't panic here. What happened is, when you, this color right here, if you write, when I right-clicked on it before, because I was playing, I told it to keep the color stop, and I don't need it to do that. 
okay? I don't want that color stop kept because I want it to actually be combined with the next one. So that's what happened with this. Right click, it shouldn't say keep color stop. Otherwise, it you saw what it did. It wasn't what we expected. All right, so my next step, select this. Copy, paste, and flip. Move it over. Okay, I got my two. I'm going to select these two. Whoopsie. Usually in class, this is where I tell everyone, okay, now what? Well, we're going to copy and we're going to paste it and we're going to move it on over. And I'm going to make it really crazy this time. And I'm going to paste another one. I'm going to move it on over here. Okay? So I have my set of six across the top and I'm going to select all of them. I'm going to go up to here to align and distribute and I'm going to say align all of the bottoms. Click apply. Boom. Now I want to distribute them all evenly. Centers. Apply. Boom. Look how easy that was. Now we got our one row done. I'm going to move it up here closer to the top. I'm going to hit copy and paste and move that pasted one down below here. And I'm going to hit paste again. And I'm going to move it down here. Now, we already know this is theoretically going to work. I have my fingers crossed. I'm going to go back to my utility menu, choose color sort. It should go through here, hunky, hunky dory. So how did you add the stop in the software? I right clicked on the color chip and, and I didn't want to do that. I, I, you add it by right clicking on a color chip and say add color stop or whatever, keep color stop. I don't want to, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, um, but that's how you do it. You right click on the color chip and choose keep stop. So. Um, there's other re other ways, that other reasons why you would want to do that. For example, if you have an applique that you have set the tack down to be red, the uh, placement to be red, and then the finishing stitch to be red, you would want to keep stop each one of those colors. Okay, so now we've reduced our color changes. I'm going to go to my new view again, and theoretically, <sighs> oh, the crowd goes wild. Okay, this is what was supposed to happen in the first place. So... First color, linen. Second color, pumpkin. Light brown, cream brown, light brown, deep rose, white, and then the fuchsia, which is the outline color of it. So that's how easy it is to do this color sort and this copy paste in Essentials. Now, before we, let me go back here, and I'm just going to show you one way that's a shortcut for those of you that have enthusiasts. And I'm going to just select this one as a copy. I'm going to go to a brand new design page, turn on my hoop. Oops, boom, hoop. Here, I have to choose the correct hoop, which is my 130 by 180, which is up here. Make sure it's rotated. Apply. OK. Here we go. And I'm going to paste my little Frappuccino guy here. If you have enthusiast. This is one of the cool features. Everyone loves enthusiasts because of knockdown stitching. Well, think of key fobs and felties and all these little tiny things that you want to do multiples of your hoop. If you go to the utility menu and you say instant repeat, this brings up a dialog box that says, how many across do you want? We want six. How many down do you want? You want three. Whoops, not four. We want three. I want them to be alternate flipped. Whoop, that's upside down. Maybe alternate mirrored. I want to adjust the spacing so that they fit in my hoop. Now, one thing is, is that if you adjust your spacing too far, even though you might not see your hoop, you can always, um, it's a live. So as soon as it turns um, back to normal here, you don't have to, um, you're good to go. Change my vertical distance. Boom, boom, boom. Click OK, right? Yes, OK. Boom, now we're done. And now we, well, we got to do our utility, our color sort again. So if you see, that's a nice shortcut that you can do in Essentials as opposed to, um, that. that's done, the, let's see. Let me go back here again. The second way we did it was an enthusiast using instant repeat. The first one that we did here, whoops, no, that's the, this one. This one was done using essentials with copy and paste. Now, both are going to yield the exact same result. 
So you don't have to, um, whoops, zoom to windows. Boom, boom. There we go. Whole cam on the bottom here. Uh, I thought I'd keep the screen up just in case anybody had any questions as far as um, what I had done on the screen. The nice thing about Enthusiasts is it does give you the shortcuts. It was um, essentials, copy and paste. The key points are to make sure that you have in unique individual colors. Okay. You don't want, if, if you have the same color going on in your design, when you do your color sort, they're all going to be combined into one and then you don't end up with the colors. Okay. I got lots of thumbs up here. I don't know if those are delayed or people are liking what they saw. I don't know. Um, amazing. Didn't know that. Okay, great. <laughs> we like to teach people new tricks on here. Now, the, um, oh, hey, Mary Gail, how are you doing? One, um, uh, Antonio, Antonia, very, uh, very cool. Good to see you guys. Okay, there is a video. Let me see if I, I copied it here so that, oops. Oh, you guys can actually see this. Now, don't write this down, okay? This is the link to the video on the YouTube channel, on the Embrilliance YouTube channel. What this this video talks about, remove hidden stitches. And um, it has a picture of a strap keeper from Seven's Emporium. Oh, not from... Let's see, S-E-V-E-N, Poshby, S-E-M-P-O-R-I-U-M. Uh, that's what's on the picture of the video. And this video goes through how to add a design inside, like how to add lettering into a key fob and do your color sort so that you don't re get your hidden stitches removed. That's a... Um, uh, that's like a, the number one issue that happens is that people's hidden stitches are get removed because when you insert a design in the center of another design, and I'll just do a quickie thing right here. Let me go. Whoops. No, hit cancel. What are we doing? What are we doing? Just minimize you crazy, crazy dude. Paste. Command V. Okay, here we go. We'll just use this as an example and I will delete the heart. And I'll delete the straw color just so that we have a blank space here. When you want to add something in the middle of this, okay, okay, is in all enthusiast worth purchasing? Yes, I love enthusiast. And we can I'll talk about that in a bit. Where you were teaching, I always wanted to learn the alignment feature. Oh, good, I'm glad. Okay, say this, pretend, pretend, okay, pretend guys, this is a key fob and you want to put your, or you just want to put your initial L in the middle here or your initial in the middle. So I'm going to use my lettering tool, and in this, I'm just going to type the letter L, okay? And I want to put the L in the center of this. But I want my L to stitch out in my stitching order. I don't, I don't know if you can see this because I got my, you know, I'm doing this. I have this camera thingy. Oh, yes, you can see it. Okay, maybe. Yes, okay. <clears throat> that L, we really kind of want that to stitch after the foam or after the any after any of these items here but before this final stitch out because we don't want that L to show up on the back of it right okay you picking up what I'm putting down guys so first of all I need to what we're looking at here on our screen right now are two designs a design has a number with an either a plus sign that's a windows has a plus sign next to it or the Mac has the disclosure triangle Either function is the same. When you click on the plus sign, you disclose everything that's below it. Okay, so in order to put this L in the middle here, you have to drag it and drop it in the middle here. Well, it, look at what happened to our d one design with one lettering object. We now have three designs. So, and this last one is on top of stitches in the bottom one. Okay, so you have three designs that are overlapping each other, which is when remove hidden stitches kicks in. And what happens is anything that's hidden by this running stitch, which, as you know, if you've done this before, this will be hidden by the running stitch, and this color is removed, hidden by the running stitch. The quick trip trick, and this is shown in that video that I just described down on the Brilliance YouTube channel, on the Essentials playlist, you have to tell 
the software that these two items here, these two running stitches, can't be removed. You have to keep them. The easiest way to do that is I use this quick tri trick here at the bottom. Um, someone asked, how do you add a color stop? When you right-click on the color chip, it, you either can give it a job, saying it's a position or material, or you can say keep color stop, which is when you have red, 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 and you want the machine to stop. You choose keep color stop. If you don't want this to be removed by hidden stitches, tell the software what it is. It's applique position. The second one, I don't want that one to be removed. It has a job. It's the applique material. Now, once you have those two in there, when you do your save or your color sort or anything like that, these two first colors, are, it's illegal. It is against the law for the remove hidden stitches to remove those stitches because they have a job. That's the purpose of right-clicking on the color chip and choosing that applique position or material. Now, I can't... Usually when I show this in class, all the little light bulbs go on. I don't see any light bulbs going on. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. Um, you can always... Like I said, that video is on the Brilliance Essentials playlist. It's called something about adding a design to an in the hoop project. And it's about how to set your colors or your color stops or the the jobs of the color chips. Trying to watch from here in Texas. Hey, Suzanne, how are you? I've been watching you with your hats on in some of the Facebook classes. Okay, Sue, that's what you did wrong. Well, now you know and you won't do it the next time. Um, the other way of changing these colors, I gave you the shortcut. Right click on here and give it a job. The other way of doing this, which is how the video shows, is click on the color chip as if you were to change the color. And where it says applique here at the top, this is where you give uh, the job as well. But a lot of us, we I'm, I like to do these videos to give the, um, the quick shortcuts so that you save some time. So this is one way of doing it. There's always more than one, more than one way to get any job done. Hopefully that makes sense. Christine, great info on controlling remove hidden stitches. Okay, and that makes sense, um, having such an issue. It really is an, an issue um, because it, we just, we, and we as, our, as artists, we envision something that's going to happen and we see it. So we need to bend the software to our will. And this software, I, I just absolutely adore Essentials. It, and it is so such a powerful program because it does so much. And some people have been using Essentials, I think, for seven or eight years now. And they've had never had a need to go to anything further. But what's nice is that the Embrilliance programs do allow you to, to add more, um, more things. If you want to add digitizing or if you want to add enthusiasts. Um, I, I don't know how to post. I'll post it afterwards, the link to the video, because I'm not sure uh, I can get uh, you know, you're asking me to do crazy things. <laughs> oh, but I see, maybe I can add a comment here. Posse. Oh, oh, Sue, you may, if I can figure out how to find it again. Hold on, Sue. Hold on. Oh, I may be learning something new. I'm going to teach this old dog new tricks. Command C for copy. I'm going to go over here and hit Command V for, oh, look at that. Did that show up? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, it did! <laughs> okay, Lisa gets a little bit too excited over these, these things. I just learned something new. Oh, no, I don't want to cancel. I just want to minimize you out of the way. Ah, oh, yes, you can teach me something new. Um, let's see, this is where we were. Oh, man, very excited. So there's the link for that. Oh, while I'm here, since you asked, and since I have the power to do this, okay, how do I get my mouse cursor back on this screen? I made a mini handout. Oh, imagine that. Lisa made a handout. Okay. Maybe that's... Oh, I lost my mouse. There it is. You want the handout? Whoops, congrats. I'm not... Okay. And it is at www.so-bubbles.com forward slash... What did I call it? FB Live, I think. Well, I'm excited, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, okay. So I put the link to where the handout is on my website. So you can go and, um, and uh, it's not extensive. Well, I was trying to, to get the machine going and, and write it up, but it'll give you some some reminders. 
I should have put the link to the video in there too, but you have the links here. So that's kind of exciting. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Uh, someone had asked about, uh, I got sidetracked squirrel, uh, enthusiast. What is, I showed you the instant repeat. That's wicked cool. That's just like one of the features that I use all the time. And if you're uh, someone that does the felties or the, uh, in the hoop key fobs, or you want to, uh, do multiples in one hoop. That instant repeat's absolutely fabulous. The utility menu, when you have the enthusiast installed, does has a whole bunch of features in it. It has knockdown stitching. Yes, it does. That's wonderful. But in addition to the instant repeat, it will also let you do mirror times four, which is how to do a frame design. So four in the corners, and they're equally, and you can rotate them. It has carousel, which is how you can do wreaths for doing your circular monograms and doing little custom designs around it. Uh, there's scatter which allows you to um, scatter designs all over the, the fabric or uh, maybe say you have a snowman and you have a little tiny snowflake and now you want to add snowflakes all through there. You can scatter those things. Um, it's got lots of fun features. Plus it also has the stitch editing and it has the slicing and the virtual hoops. I mean, there's so much to enthusiast that when people say, oh, I just bought it for knockdown stitching, wow, you're missing out because it does so much more. And it's not an upgrade to Essentials because it doesn't do what Essentials does. It has all these features that it does on its own. So uh, it's when you wanna go and take your customizing one step further, that's when um, you might wanna go into something like the um, adding enthusiast. So hopefully that answered the question without, without too much ado. All right, guys, I'm not sure. I don't see any more questions on here. You're probably all bombarding my website and trying to download those files. You know, that happens all the time, which is why I don't give the handouts, um, the links at the beginning, because then you'd be bombarding and not paying attention. So, okay, so I think I am done. Best money you ever spent. Yes, I I agree. I, I think it's fabulous. So, um uh, great. I'm glad you find the enthusiast information uh, helpful. I mean, once when I bought, when I first got my uh, embroidery machine, and I tell this to all my classes, so oh, those of you who have been to my classes before, it's a repeat. But when I first bought my embroidery machine almost 25 years ago, we had no choice in software. You bought the software that came with your machine. And it was, I think, like $1,100. And all I wanted to do was take a design off my computer and put it on the embroidery machine. I mean, there was no, in, there was very baby steps internet, but I had to pay $1,100. So when, you know, and Brilliance came out with this modular system, man, that's wonderful because um, it, that's what we want. We want a program that does something that, what we want to do. So if all you want to do is customize and, and add names and resize, Essentials is your, is your go-to program. So <laughs> you sold one child to buy it. Oh, well, I got a couple I could give you. <laughs> no, I only have two and I'm going to keep them. We're, we're not selling my kids. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, for those of you that want to add digitizing, I did the Stitch Artist Live video the other day. I'm going to be doing another Stitch Artist video on Monday. I have to um, get that set up and I'll be posting that link so that you can... Um, watch it. But I like doing these now that I'm figuring out my software on how to do the looking at me and looking at the software and not having so much lag. The last, when I had tried to do the live video before, it was such a lag in the software that it was, it was very, very frustrating for me um, because I just didn't, that's not good. Okay. Anyway, I digress. So, uh, it's Friday night. Hopefully, you, at least in here in the United States, those of you in Australia, it's already it's late Friday. Is it? Or is it Saturday? I think it's Saturday. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Time flies. You're having fun. Uh, and yes, I need, still need to get in touch with Mr. Gary Walker of Echidna Sewing Products because I will be coming to Australia in November for teaching some classes. So, um, Gary Walker, Echidna Sewing Products. He's in Kapalaba. They're the ones that distribute the In Brilliance software, and he's the one that's going to be bringing me over and getting that done. So where can you find all these live videos? My Facebook page. Yes, my, my Sew Bubbles page, the page that you clicked on to get to this video. There's other videos there. Um, wow, all the... 
can't read that fast. It's Saturday. Okay, Sue, you must, you are the one New South Wales, possibly. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I'm, I'm getting confused. Saturday here in Sydney. Okay, see, the dateline just, just confuses me. Um, but yes, my, the live videos, I'm going to be doing them off of my Bubbles page. That's so it the, my business page is, if you go into Facebook and the search, it's So Bubbles, S-E-W Bubbles. And it's one and it comes up with Bubbles Menagerie. And I'm going to, do, I do them there because then they can be shared and, um, to other groups or to anything. If I put them into a group, Specifically, like if I go to the Stitch Artist Group, only the people that belong to the Stitch Artist Group can see that video. And although that's great, um, I think other people would like to see it too. So they're on my page. Okay, you're taking my classes in May, either in Kentucky or in Houston, because I'm doing two sets of classes in May, but it'll be good to see you. Uh, if you're going to Kentucky, anyone else is interested in the everything embroidery market in Kentucky? Uh, I did that live video from the Embrilliance Facebook page. Now, when I say in Brilliant's Facebook page, I mean, you, you, in your Facebook search engine up top, the, where it says search, type in in Brilliance and you'll find the big yellow needle. Uh, that's our, that's the in Brilliance page and that's where all the official stuff comes in. So uh, you'll want to follow that page because when they do free designs and updates and give news information and projects and, and all sorts of stuff, it, that's that page. So you want to make sure that um, you go to it. So I did a live video this morning talking about the everything embroidery market in Kentucky. And uh, I guess I'll, right after that, a whole bunch of people went to go sign up for the classes because it's a nice, nice location. Owensboro, it's right near the border near in Indiana and um, uh, Kentucky, right in that area. And someone said, well, is it close to Indiana? I said, well, it better be because I'm flying into Indiana. <laughs> so it can't be too far away. Um, Canada's a little closer to Australia. Yes, I understand, but um, it's 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 tough. Uh, you know, I, I, I crossing the border. Uh, when I go with uh, Echidna Sewing Products, they bring me over. So they're the ones that uh, take care of all the, the business end of it. I, crossing that border and doing business is a lot of paperwork. And uh, those of us in the United States, you know, it's coming up on April 15th and we don't like paperwork, especially this time of year. So you see me getting a twitch thinking about um, taxes and paperwork, Ugh, not my idea of a good time. So, uh, but what's nice is that I do do all the, the videos here on Facebook. I do them on YouTube. I have my blog with written instructions. All of the class notes for all of my classes are on my website, which is so-bubbles.com and um, click on shop. They're listed under shop so that they, they're searchable on the website. So you can find them there. They're zero, they're free. So just that you can download them and print them out. Um, it was kind of nice to see someone had printed them all out and she's got a stack of like a, almost like a quarter of an inch thick of, of my handouts. Um, why did my essentials fonts go away when you started? I don't know. Did you contact tech support? Stuff like uh, tech support questions that like that, I I have no idea. It never has it happened to me. But if it did happen to me, I would go to embrilliance.com and click on contact us and ask that question because it, I'm sure it's happened to other people and support has an answer. So I'll be able to solve it for you. There, in fact, many of the most frequently asked questions, like the things that happen to a lot of people over and over and over again, they actually have a link on the Embrilliance website at the top that says FAQ. So if you don't even want, if you don't want to talk to support, but they do get paid to answer the questions. So you should talk to support. Um, <laughs> but if you don't, if you want to check first and do some research on your own first, go to the Embrilliance website and click on FAQ and you'll get the most common questions. There. The questions and answers, but not just the questions, but the answers. Um, one other thing to pay attention to on the Embrilliance website is if you are not, um, they, they send out a newsletter, maybe once a month, every other month. It's not a lot. So you're not going to be getting this daily spammy newsletter from them. But the link for the newsletter is on the Embrilliance website in the left column. that says newsletter at the bottom. Make sure you sign up and follow the instructions to add um, Embrilliance.com as a safe sender. Because if you don't, you can sign up, but if you don't allow your internet provider to um, give you the mail, you won't get the newsletter. And uh, might as well get it if you're signing up for it. 
All right. Same thing for mine. My newsletter is on my website, and I, my website is called So Dash Bubbles, which uh, some people have think is kind of a funny name. So it might get filtered out. So make sure that you add me to your safe center list as well. Anyway, guys, I think I am done. So I'm going to go and uh, head on upstairs. It's Friday night. I think we're going to go watch a movie, finish my beer, and enjoy my evening. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Got the links to the handouts, links to the YouTube video. Thank you. I think that was Sue that gave me the directions on how to add my own comment and asking. Oh, I'm excited now. <laughs> okay. So I will see you guys online. If you're interested in the Stitch Artist video, make sure you like my Sew Bubbles um, Facebook page so that you get the notifications when I send, you, send out a, a notice saying that's going to be going. And it'll be Monday. Take care, guys. Have a good one.